Hi folks and welcome to another kit review. I have got today one of the most popular World War I Great War aircraft of all. It's the lovely Wing Wings Sopwith Camel Clergett. Uh, the Clergett was the um, version of the Camel that had the Clergett engine and actually just reading about it, it's quite interesting. It says that they had a lot of problems with this actually when it, was, it wasn't very good at altitude, this engine. Uh, and they only had about 90 horsepower, between 90 and 110 horsepower, and they had a lot of issues when it got to 10,000 feet. Um, uh, sorry, the yeah, okay, this, the original was 90. 130 horsepower Clerget 9B engines, but the variant suffered from problems when it got colder and got to high altitude, so they had to change it. And they brought out a 140 horsepower version, which had late, less teething troubles. Uh, and then, of course, later they had a much more powerful engine, 230 horsepower shot with snipe, which made it obsolete the whole aircraft, but that's another story. Now then, let's crack on with this. Uh, this is one of my favourite sort of aircraft of the First World War. I always think of the shot with Camel as the definitive British fighter, really, even though the SE-5 was probably more numerous, I think, that was probably the more popular aircraft. But the SE-5 was kind of a... Uh, how can I put it? It's the one that you probably remember in some respects because of its shape. Um, but it looks so outdated, didn't it? It was like a kite, whereas the camel looks more like the German planes, a bit more sleek and a bit more... Um, a bit sort of prettier looking, a bit more aerodynamic. Anyway, let's have a look at what Winger Winds have got for it. Not opening these at the moment. All in sealed bags, so you'll have to forgive me for that. We have got... Yes. A really big sprue here with lots of variants on the cowl for some reason. Um, now there are different versions um, that are available anyway with different engines so that'll be the reason. And you've got the undercarriage, some very nice, I'll bring you in so you can see this properly. I think they're just talking you need to, you need to see that. But undercarriage, we've got cowls, we've got some nice engine parts, machine guns. Oh yeah, we've got some machine guns on right here. We've got some other components for the bulkhead and the framework at the side of the cockpit as well. And it's so beautifully moulded as wing that wings all seem to be flawless, you know. Uh, we don't we'll be very surprised if we found flash or anything nasty on here. It's just not gonna happen. Look at this, We've got the upper and lower wing, uh, all with this beautiful sort of a stressed sort of looking skin, especially at the front. I if you can make that out, it's just coming a little bit tighter on the zoom. See if we can get this on the camera. Can you see that? Yes, there it is. See what I mean? It's really, really nice. Very, very authentic looking, you know. Difficult to get plastic to look right, and that's been that's been done lovely. And then we've got some parts of the engine. Uh, it's a rotary engine, this one, so you can see the uh, whoops, the cylinders. Right there we go, cylinder heads, and we've got the uh, the wheels there. Well, it's the inner wheels. Ignore the outer. That's just the moulding. It's not actually a wheel and tyre, it's just the, uh, the spokes we're looking at. And then we have... Oh yeah, I bought myself a little bit of a treat here. I got myself some uh, rather nice uh, Vickers Highland Type B loading handle machine guns uh, to just replace with some resin the uh, standard items that come in the kit, just a little bit nice. Um, this is an interesting one, we've got, we've got a curved sprue here, deliberately curved, it's not warped, we've done it on purpose, yeah? and it's to give uh, the shape to the wing, fantastically done, very clever. And we've got some nice propellers, oh yeah, very very nice. Got some clear parts, just mainly lights and little visors and things, you know. Okay. 
And then we have got the instructions and the markings. And again, we've got a really big, 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 big option for the markings. Let's have a look. Big marking sheet, decals, huge. Wonga bonga, that sounds quite good for the mega for that one. I think it's an Irish chap, isn't it? I had that. I'll come back to that in detail in a moment. There's a little bit of photo etch on the back. Now, let's have a look at these destructions. So, Clergyet Camel, F1 Camel, Sock with Camel, superb. Possibly the most famous of all the World War One aircraft, as I was saying. There you go. Certainly you know, one of the most distinctive. Uh, there's quite a few um, elements on the. Uh, I'm just going to move these because they're a little bit in my way here. Yeah. Over there. Yeah, there's quite a few um, elements on the uh, the sprue that are not going to be used. Now you can see those here that are blued out. Or lile it down to be more precise, I think. Here we go, building the cockpit. Now then, brilliant. All the gauges are there. All the gauges, and I think they're all handled by a decal. Um, it's quite interesting, there's a photo here. I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see this well. And it says there, you can still just see it. It says this crushed, captured, unidentified clergy at Camel allows us a rare view inside the operational aircraft, including the style of wicker seat, 30 gallon main petrol tank, and carburetor induction pipes. Note how the dark paint applied to the engine cowling has run under the access cover. Here. <laughs> Quite interesting, isn't it? Then we've got a fuel tank, petrol tank, and a big one, 30 gallons. And then we're building up the cockpit area and the Highland co cocking handle type A machine guns. Internal rigging. Ooh, here we go, here we go. I always start to get nervous when I hear those words. <laughs> These photos help though, don't they? You know, you've got proper colour photo, the actual aircraft. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And then we've got all this uh, detail about how to drill holes for the cables, control cables, and rigging you're going to need to drill. So there's going to be quite a lot of that. I mean, I don't know how long people normally take to build one of these, but I'm thinking this is a pretty big project. I'm thinking if it's going to take minimum two to three hundred hours to do it justice, you know. And when I say that figure, that includes all painting and prep and everything, not just the physical building. Cockpit decking. Wow. Then we've got the strut details. Lots of struts on this. Petrol pump. Petrol pump appears to be driven by a little propeller on the strut. <laughs> like a ram air turbine type of arrangement. Interesting. Such detail. Every little tiny detail is captured. There's no nothing skimped or missed. Rigging. Oh, dreading it. Now we've got the um, undercarriage. To the engine build. It's just the engine build quite late. You know, you do, you're building bombs before you do the engine. So you sort of build the engine later. Do your little bombs that go underneath. Look quite cute, actually. <laughs> That's the right word. And then you build your engine, and it sort of bolts on the front. Um, just bolts on the front bulkhead, really. The engine. Almost like an aftermarket thing, you know. Oh, it's two pegs. 
such beautiful paper that we, that we use on these. I like a collector's item, but it feels like it's about three pages. It's so thick. There we go. Wonga bonga. Yeah, the actual daily Irish chap he was. A bit of a sense of humour, obviously. Mm, it says that uh, pilot shot down a Gota, Gota bomber on July the 7th, 1917. That's the day after the Red Baron was shot down, isn't it? Gosh. And then we've got so many different options here for the alternative schemes. Really nice looking plane, actually. I've got to say it's, um, yeah, iconic World War One aircraft. I knew I had to have one of these. It's got to be the one you've got to get. It's like this, it's like not having a Spitfire if you don't have a camel. It's the iconic go-to aeroplane of World War One, isn't it? Look at this, all these different variants. That's why there's so many decals on the decal sheet. One here looks like something in the middle of a fire. Damaged by a ground fire. Looks like it's hit his petrol or something. There's a bit of burning going on there. Hmm. <laughs> See that? It burned. <laughs> yeah, and it finishes off with a few photos of the. Uh, Pre-production models, early ones. Gosh, it's like it might have a slightly shorter undercarriage uh, straw there. Huh. And then finally, again, we have a, a tribute to all the people that created it, and we got wings. And uh, to them, we are very, very grateful. I think because uh, once again, we have a really Really nice kit. Sockwith Camel F1 Clerget engine. The later ones actually uh, they moved to Bentley engines. I think they're a bit more reliable. <laughs> um, I think you also said that there was a huge number of these were made. 5,500 of them were actually manufactured by nine different manufacturers. So it was obviously uh, contracted out. A bit like in World War Two, but that's that's quite a lot for World War One. That's uh, quite impressive. Anyway, very interesting aircraft. Uh, I'll, I'll leave for this now. I must get myself a reference book for it from somewhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the review. I uh, thought it was interesting. Um, there'll be more coming along soon. So please subscribe and click the bell for notifications so when a new video is uploaded. And uh, in the meantime, uh, till next time, stay safe. Look after yourselves and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for now. Take care. Bye-bye.